All right, so. Um, OK, 10.09. If you guys can. Um, I want to see if you guys can squeeze this. These properties at the top right hand corner of your page. So we don't need all this space per se. So if you guys can fit it into this upper corner here. Can you put these properties here? I think this is going to be really helpful. Um, properties for us to kind of uh, use, so I think this is the most efficient way for us to get the order pairs and the information that we need quickly so that uh, we're, we're, we're able to avoid, you know, messy decimals and we can kind of pick points that will be easy to plot. OK, so. Um, if you guys can insert this into a space there. Okay, so these are helpful law characteristics. I think um, and this is beneficial for, um, you know, for algebraic uh, uh, equations, but it's also very helpful uh, from a graphing perspective. All right, I think it's very easy to look at these log functions and just feel like we need a calculator, or you know, that it's, you know, it just feels very um, um, kind of cryptic, um, you know, with log functions. But I think if we can just kind of practice these properties. It won't be as intimidating because if you can find the vertical asymptote and two or three points, that's enough. And you know the shape of the graph. Your log function will always have that sim that feel uh, in terms of um, the look. Um, so, okay, let me talk about these these properties. So the property here is log base b. Okay, and then the base is going to be different uh, depending on the problem. Uh, but we also want to pay attention to the base because the base is going to help us uh, allow us to choose what's going to uh, what values we want to pick. So the first property is it doesn't matter what the base is, whatever causes the argument, the argument, the log argument is the portion inside the parentheses. Whatever X value will cause that argument or that set of parentheses to be equal to zero, that's going to be where your vertical asymptote is. So vertical asymptote is not, it's the point where the, well, the graph doesn't exist at the vertical asymptote, but it gives us a nice boundary to kind of help build our the rest of our graph right if we know the boundary of our graph we kind of know how to you know where to start where to start um, um building our graph okay so it's nice to have that vertical asymptote as kind of like our anchor uh, to begin our process and the second property here is doesn't matter what the base is but what log of one is always equal to zero. So if I can find an X value that will cause my parentheses to be one, then it'll always be equal to zero and I can quickly find an order pair for me to plot. Okay, the third property here is now I want to pay attention to the base. Whatever I can choose to cause my parentheses to match the base, that's also a nice property because I know that if I can get this uh, uh, argument to match the base, then I know that my Y value will just give me a one. And then the last one here, this is also helpful. Um, whatever a value I can get to cause my uh, parentheses to be one over the base, like if it was like log base three, and if I have one third, then that's going to cause my expression to be equal to negative one. OK, okay so we're going to keep referring to these properties. And hopefully after a couple of these graphs, you'll feel more and more comfortable, um, you know, building this uh, uh, from from scratch. OK, so. OK, so we want to graph log base two of X minus one. Um, let's start off by creating a T chart. So we'll create a T chart here. Or any place that you can find some space. OK, so first thing we're going to do is. We're going to set the parentheses equal to zero. OK. So if I set the parentheses equal to zero. This is going to help me find my vertical asymptote. So when I solve for X, what do I get? X equals one. That's my asymptote. OK, so you can just put one here. Now the order pair is not going to live at one, but you're going to just put a VA here to indicate. OK, that's my boundary X equals one. OK, so we're going to go ahead and plot that, identify that vertical asymptote, and we'll do a dotted line right down x equals 1. OK. 
All right, next up, we want to choose an X value that will cause the parentheses to be equal to one. So what X value can I strategically choose that will make this turn into a one? Two, OK, so. If I plug two in, two will make the parentheses one. Doesn't matter what the what the base is. Log of one is always going to be what? Zero. So that's a quick way to find an order pair that I can plot. OK, next up. Um, I'll put a star next to this one. Um, all right, my base is two. What uh, X value can I choose strategically that will cause the parentheses to match with the same base as my log function? Three, three minus one is two. And if three minus one is two, log base two of two is always going to be equal to what? One, right? If the base and value match, it's going to cancel out nicely, so it can be one. Now the next one I would say is not essential. It's nice to kind of have an additional point to kind of give us uh, our, our path along the curve, but it's a little bit messier, right? Because you, if you want to find a value that will make this a one half, we got to go through fractions. So I would say it's not as it's not as important. It's nice to have, but the key thing is if you can find the vertical asymptote and these two um, behaviors, you're going to get a pretty good feel for the graph. Okay, so right now let's just leave this out. Um, it's not as important. Um, okay. But it's but it's a good it's a good property to to still know. All right, let's go ahead and graph our our uh, points. So we have two zero, and I have three one. Okay, you know that your graph is going to hug along your vertical axis. Uh, sorry, your vertical uh, asymptote, and it's gonna it's going to gr it's kind of kind of gradually grow after that. So it's. Um, your log your log graphs are typically uh, very slowly um, rising. Okay? It's very slow uh, rising graph. All right, domain. Yeah, so your domain is always going to involve the vertical asymptote because vertical asymptote kind of gives you that starting point, that boundary for our graph. So one to infinity. Okay, your range is always going to be what? Yeah, always all real numbers. You don't have to think twice. All your um, log functions will be the same range. Asymptote. Make sure that you don't just say one. OK, I'm looking for that uh, full equation. X equals one. Guys. Okay. OK, what's the X intercept? Two zero. Now, if the X intercept was not given to us or if we didn't find it, we have to kind of go through it algebraically. So we'll set this equal to zero and you know, turn into exponential form and see if we can solve for X. But in this case, we found it's already here for us, so we can just plot that point or identify that point. Okay, number two. Create our T-chart. Does anybody still need to look at number one? Okay. I'll put the properties here to the side. OK, so we may have to uh, find a. Um, find and find X values that that will make it easy for us, but then we may have to do some additional calculations. OK, so we'll start off by uh, it's helpful if you want to put a set of parentheses. The parentheses is around that just around that X. That's the that's the argument is just that X here. So um, what value can we choose that will get us our vertical asymptote? The zero, right? So zero, not a point, it's just a vertical asymptote. 
Right. So it should be a little bit easier without having to do any addition or subtraction here. OK, so what value can I choose? Just make it what? One, OK. So if I insert one in for X, log of one is always equal to what? Zero. But I got to do some some additional things here. This is zero, but it's going to be zero plus one, which is one. OK, what's the base of this log function? 10. So what can I choose to strategically use this third property here? Yeah, which is what? What's the B value? 10, right? Because this is log base. Well, log base B is a general statement that will adapt to any log function you're dealing with, but here we're dealing with log base 10. So we want to choose our, our X value to be 10. So if I choose X value of 10, log base 10, 10 of 10 is going to give us what? 1, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, I think this last one uh, will be helpful here. So my base is 10, so what's my X value that I can choose here? 1 over 10, okay. And if I choose 1 over 10, that will give me a negative 1. And negative one plus one is zero. OK, so it's not as important, but it's just nice to have an additional point just to kind of help confirm that your graph is lined up nicely. OK, so let's start off with your vertical asymptote. Okay, right, one, one. Ten, two, so you see how the graph is rising very, very slowly. You know, it's going to be, yeah, it's barely moving up, right? It goes at a very, very slow pace. And then one tenth zero. Okay, so try your best to just sketch your graph. And it's going to go up very slowly here. Barely inching along. OK, domain. Uh, look at the asymptote here. Zero, OK. Range, don't have to think twice. It's always the same. Asymptote. X-intercept, normally we would have to solve, uh, set this equal to zero, but it looks like we're able to land on it uh, just by finding that fourth point. So. One tenth zero. Good. Any questions so far? All right, number three. Do you have to go right now, or can you stay, Josh? Do you have to go right now, or can you do five, five more, more minutes? Yeah, I can probably. Okay, all right. Just want you to see this one here. Okay, um, what's another way of uh, thinking about natural log of x? How can we make it more descriptive for us? Yeah, log, uh, yeah, three log base e of x. And it's always good um, if you don't see parentheses, go ahead and create parentheses around your argument so that you can kind of just always, you know, um, focus in on on what you're tr trying to target um, as you're building uh, your order pairs. Okay, so let me bring out the properties again here. All right, um, where's our vertical asymptote? We always set the parentheses equal to what? 
equal to zero, right? Always set the parentheses equal to zero and x equals zero, that's just zero. So I'm gonna say zero VA. That's not an order pair, but it's it's a helpful starting point for us. Okay. Uh, what's next? One. All right. If there's nothing more than just an X in the parentheses, then it'll be easy, right? It's just if there's any translation going on, then we gotta or any shift going on, then we gotta make some adjustment here to make these parentheses match what's inside the parentheses here. Okay, and then it doesn't matter what the base is, log of one is always zero, and zero times three is still zero. Sorry, right, we gotta worry about this three as our as part of our calculation. Okay. Okay, next up. What's the base? So we want to choose E. E is around 2.7 which is just a little bit less than three. Okay, just, you know, if you don't, yeah. And then if log base E of, and what, what was log base E of E? One, and then one times three is three. And uh, I think this we can also do. What can we choose strategically here? One over, E. So it's like one over, think of E as three, right? So think of one third, so like 0.3 ish. Okay, if I put uh, one over E in here, log base E of one over E will give me negative one, and negative one times three is negative three. Again, this is not essential, but it kind of gives us confirmation that we're on the right track with, with all the order pairs that we have. Okay, so vertical asymptote. One zero. E three, think of E is 2.7. Little under three. And then one over E, that's like one third. So it's going to be barely to the right of the asymptote, but you're going to go down three units. And it makes sense because it's along that path of that uh, um, near the vertical asymptote. So you see how there's a three in front. OK, so that's going to end up stretching the graph a bit more. So your graph is going to feel like it's rising a little faster than the other um, graphs that we've done. That's a little steeper than than these these previous graphs, right? Because of that three. Okay, domain. Yeah. So your domain is always going to start or end with a vertical asymptote. Your vertical asymptote is always going to play a role in um, one of the boundaries of your domain. Okay, range. Yeah, same same. Asymptote. Equal zero. X intercept. One zero. Okay. okay. So I think if we can stick to these nice um, properties, uh, it won't feel as intimidating uh, to uh, graph log functions or to find order pairs, right? If we can kind of just focus ourselves around these properties. And these properties are also good for algebraic purposes. If we know these properties, it can also help us down the road as well. OK, so any questions of three? All right, let's look at number four. Does anybody still need to look at three? OK, let's uh, walk through number four together. Keep, uh, here's my. Key chart. All right, so how do we find the vertical asymptote here? Set what? 
mm -hmm. set the parentheses equal to zero. X equals negative three. That's our vertical asymptote. It's good to always start with the vertical asymptote. It kind of gives you an idea where your graph is going to kind of begin. Even though the graph doesn't live at the vertical asymptote. OK, OK, so now I got to do a little bit of, uh, of, of strategizing here. Um, I want my parentheses to be equal to one, so what can I choose strategically that will make this parentheses equal to one? So I can use this property here. Negative two, does that make sense? If I put negative two in for X, negative two plus three is one, and we know log of one is always going to be equal to zero. It doesn't matter what the base is, right? Okay, does that make sense? Right. Strategically, we want the base to match my value here. So what can I choose to cause this to match my base? What X value can I choose? One, because one plus three is four. And if I can get log base four or four to be next to each other, there's certain there's that this is property we can apply, right? So we'll choose one. 1 plus 3 is 4. Log base 4, 4 is equal to what? 1, but there's a, a negative in front, so therefore negative 1. OK, this 1 over B is a little troublesome because I got to get something that will give me a 1 fourth, so let's, let, let's ignore that. We don't have to do that, especially if there's a translation going on. We don't necessarily need that point. It's kind of like a bonus point that kind of helps us with our graph. OK. Any questions so far? Okay, uh, vertical asymptote, negative three. Negative two, zero. One, negative one. Okay, what's different about this graph here? Yeah, yeah. Say wait, say it again. Okay, vertical slope is still there, but what do you notice about the shape of the graph? It's going down, right? Because why? What's happening to it? Negative, which means that graph is getting what? Reflected. Yeah. So when it's reflected, it's instead of instead of rising, it's going to be kind of falling. Um, and but all we need is two points to kind of help us understand that um, that pattern. Okay, domain. Okay, range. Oh yeah, same, right. Asymptote. X intercept. Negative two zero. All right, I would like to work through these uh, next page with you as well. So, five, six, and see if we can also get to some of the parts on the bottom here. All right, anybody still need this page? Are we okay? Okay, y equals natural log of negative x. Let's get this to be more descriptive for us. How can I rewrite this here? Y is same thing as y equals log base e negative x. Okay, so got the parentheses there. All right, what's the first thing we can choose here? Mm -hmm. So you set the parentheses equal to zero, negative x equals zero. I still get zero, so there's my vertical asymptote. So 
So put zero and then VA. All right, what's uh, an order pair that can help me apply the second property here? What can I choose for X that will make my parentheses equal to one? Yeah, so if I choose negative one, then I have negative negative and that will turn it into one there. So I'll choose negative one. And I negative of negative times negative one will give me one and log of one is always equal to zero. Doesn't matter what the base is, log of one is always zero. OK, I want to match the base, so what can I choose for X that will cause these two values to match? Negative E. So log base E of negative negative E will be E and log base E of E is always equal to if the bases match. It's always equal to. OK. There's no shift, so I think this we can do. Um, what can I choose to get this property to to work out for us, for us in our favor? Choose what for X? Negative one over E. And that will always give me a negative one. Yeah. Think of E as a little bit less than three, okay? 2.7 and then this is think of if you're doing fraction just think in terms of okay make e3 because we just want to make it as we don't have to just set ballpark value so we know it's about around negative one third okay so vertical asymptote x equals zero negative one zero negative e1 so negative 2.7 Negative one over E, that's negative one third, negative one. What's different about this graph that looks different from than the other ones? Yeah, it's on the other side, right? So typically, um, we have a reflection over the x-axis if the negative is outside, but if the negative is inside uh, the function, then there's going to be reflection over the y-axis. We're not going to see that as much, but um, that's that's the that's that's what's happening here. It's getting reflected over the y axis because there's a negative inside my argument. Okay, it's going to make our domain a little different. What's our domain going to be? Yeah, it's not going to be from zero to infinity, right? We're going to go from negative infinity to zero, so. Yeah, not going to affect the range, though. Asymptote. And what's the x-intercept? Negative one, zero. OK, number six is one where we're going to use the properties, but we got to do some additional calculations to get to where we want, because there's going to be some more transformations that's going to affect our overall ending value. But we're still going to go through the same steps as before. It's just we may have to do a little bit of Addition, subtraction to get to where we want to be. All right, does so anybody still need to look at number five? Okay. All right, first things first, how do we find our asymptote? So you go to zero, OK. So we'll do negative two and then call it vertical asymptote. All right, we got to choose some strategic points here. What can I choose to make my parentheses equal to one? Negative one, right? If I choose negative one for X, that's going to make negative one plus two equal to one, and I can use this property. So negative one. 
So if I choose negative one in for X, let me highlight what we are converting here. I'll put this in. So negative one in for X, negative one plus two is one. That's going to cause this log base five of one equal to what? Zero, okay, all right, do some more calculations here. This piece is zero, zero times four is plus three, three, okay. So we're kind of just getting the, the messy part out of the way and then we can do the rest of the calculations um, um, by hand. All right, so we took care of that. We were able to find an easy order pair for us to plot. OK, uh, next up, log base B of B. What can I do to make my argument match my base? What can I choose for X? Three, right? Three plus two is five, and log base five of five has a nice um, property for us to use. So if I insert three in for X, I get five, and then what's log base five of five equal to? One, okay, and then one times four is, okay, and then four plus three is seven. Yeah, let's not worry about this last property. It's not it's gonna be a little messy having to deal with fractions and trying to get this X plus two equal to one fifth. And it's not worth the hassle here. I think this is enough for us to get, we know how our graph's gonna look just by this, I think. OK, so vertical asymptote. Order pair. All right, we got a pretty good um, uh, feel for this graph. We can uh, find some information here. Domain. Uh, yeah, negative two, right. Range. Asymptote. All right, x-intercept not as clean, right? Because this doesn't show up here. So x-intercept is when what is equal to zero? Y is zero. Okay, so let's solve this by hand. A little messy here, but we, let's see, get some practice with the algebraic equation here. I'll work it out so you guys can see it here. Zero equals. OK, I'll subtract three from both sides. Divide both sides by four. Negative three fourths is like negative 0.75. Convert to exponential form. How do I get this in exponential form? Start with the uh, base five raised to the negative 0.75 equals x plus two. Subtract two. Not a pretty number, but we're kind of getting practice with our solving log equations. So there's our x intercept. I'm just going to put that in this slot here. Yeah, I'm probably not going to have one as messy as this on the test, but I think it's still good practice for us to know how to go through this process of solving, right? It's kind of a review from, from our algebraic steps. So 
OK, good. Um, let's pick up tomorrow with graphing, and then I think we can start our test review on Monday. OK.